Hey, Jen, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Excellent. It's an honor to be speaking with you. Well, I'm, I'm proud to be speaking with y'all, too. Well, first off, Jet, um, I want to ask you, I guess, about uh, your story, how you, you grew up and you know, found out you were the daughter of Hank Williams. Uh, that story almost sounds like it could be one of his songs. Well, actually, it could, and I tell people, if I made up the story, it wouldn't be that good. It's, you know, um, one of the stories of an adopted child that actually gets most of the answers to her questions, and they happen to be the answers you want to hear. And I'm one of the fortunate ones that went on the search was not only did I find out who my dad was, I found out that my dad wanted me. And uh, he had signed all the papers. Uh, He just didn't count on dying at 29. And so I was able to... uh, find this information out and uh, set the record straight and move forward and be able to put out this wonderful historical box set. Yeah, it seems like um, living in orphanages and stuff, um, that would kind of be like the dream fantasizing about uh, who your parents might be and to find out uh, that it was actually Hank Williams, that must have been uh, quite the feeling when you discovered that. Well, you know, and I was in in foster homes and stuff, and, and, you know, it is kind of a Cinderella story, but what's more important, and it always had been to me and still is, is not that Hank Williams is your father, you know, somebody famous. It's more important that that father wanted you, because had Hank Williams uh, denied me, said, I don't know anything about this child, I don't want anything to do with this child, we wouldn't be having this conversation. And when I found out that my dad wanted me, he went to his lawyer's, before I was born, he had all the legal papers signed. He, he uh, took full responsibility, and I was to live with him, and those papers were uh, sealed never to see the light of day. That was what's more important because I think everybody wants to be wanted. And, you know, it's, it's great to, to have, you know, uh, someone that's famous or whatever, but if that person didn't want you, what good is that? Yeah, definitely. It's great that it all worked out. And now that you're in charge of uh, the legacy and releasing a lot of great stuff, and I know the uh, Complete Mother's Best collection is out now, and that's uh, really kind of a dream for, for Hank Williams fans, for sure. Well, it, you know, it is a, it's a, I don't know that any uh, amount of archival materials actually ever been salvaged, saved, and uh, uh, actually... Uh, recorded again, and we were very fortunate because uh, this the, this material was slated for the Dipsy Dumpster. It was saved, and technology has uh, allowed us to be able to take this these acetates, which is a, a metal disc that they just dropped the needle on and recorded for one-time play, that we've been able to transfer these and uh, be able to save them and to be able to share them. Yeah, that's an incredible story in itself, and it's amazing how, I guess, little foresight people had back then about saving things like this. It was just heading to the dumpster, and nobody thought maybe somebody would want to hear this sometime. Well, the thing, these acetates were made to play one time, and, you know, it it really has uh, taken a, you know, those were thrown away, but even when we came to uh, the celluloid tape, the radio stations would just keep, they would tape over the, uh, the uh, a show because they were, you know, saving money. And, and, and today, uh, the other thing is that even though if they had saved it back then, nobody had anything they could play it on in the private sector. So, you know, no one ever, uh, and that was part of the lawsuit that Hank Jr. and I fought the record company for the ownership, was that, you know, no one ever thought any of this uh, stuff back, the early recordings, could actually be duplicated and commercially uh, exploited. So, uh, you know, if, if you said in 1951, hey, by the way, I can stick it over on this computer and I can clean it up and I can uh, have it on a download or put it on a CD and put it out, they'd be looking at you saying, what? I mean, that was just, that was like Star Wars. Right. Uh, you know, because uh, recording was just starting in its infancy. And as I said, uh, the mass uh, population couldn't afford anything to play it back on even if they had it well it's great that uh we were able to find this stuff and uh, as you mentioned of course uh, hank williams his career was cut so short but uh, with this set it almost you know doubles maybe triples his output i mean this is uh 
definitely something that you don't see every day that something like this being discovered. Um, you're absolutely right. It increases his catalog by 50%. So it's, if you can imagine, uh, let's take the Beatles, and all of a sudden tomorrow somebody says, hey, I found all this stuff, and you double what the Beatles had already put out. Uh, so, you know, this is 142 songs of my dad, and uh, almost a third of them you've never heard him sing before. And you've also never heard that version. Uh, and what I mean by that is if he's singing Cold Cold Heart, this is a live cut. And no artist sings the same, the, their hit song or any song the same way every time they sing it. And the thing I liked when, when I was listening through it, um, it kind of seems like Hank is uh, just pretty laid back and kind of joking around, having a good time. And, you know, it's maybe not as serious as it would have been if he was recording an album. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you can hear his personality. Uh, of course, you can hear him on script when he does the commercial. But then when they go off, they talk about, uh, you know, he calls the band uh, nicknames Burhead uh, and... You can also, you hear him laugh, tell jokes. Uh, you really get to meet the guy, Hank Williams. And as you said, he's happy. He's laid back. He's, uh, uh, he's enjoying himself. And uh, you also, by looking at the songs he sings, not only is he singing his hits, he's singing uh, gospel songs and other people's hits. So, you know, you kind of get an insight into, well, what kind of song would Hank Williams want to sing if he wasn't going to sing one of his? Well, and Jed, it must be incredible for you personally, you know, if somebody were digging through the attic and found maybe some old letters or, you know, something like that and some old pictures, but uh, for this to be uh, found for you, to just have these memories yourself, that must be pretty awesome. It is, and as I said, you get to hear him laugh, you get to hear him talk, you get to hear him uh, tell you what he thinks, you get to hear what he, he tells you what his favorite song is, he tells you childhood memories, and so, you know, you really get to meet this guy, Hank Williams. And he tells backstories on, on a lot of the songs. Uh, he actually makes uh, some mistakes, and you see how he handles it. Uh, and I just think it's, it's, you know, some of his absolute best works ever. Yeah, it's definitely very cool. And again, uh, Hank Williams, The Complete Mother's Best Collection is out now. And um, you can get it on Amazon. Is there a website or maybe somewhere you would direct people to as well? I would uh, uh, go to Time Life, and I'm sure that they've got a thing there uh, telling you about the box set and where you can get it and uh, all the information. And i got to ask you, it seems like you've uh, basically released a lot of stuff already, maybe everything there is, or is there something else maybe down the line we can expect? Well, you know, uh, we were able to find uh, some other material after this, and we were able to uh, release it. And, you know, I, every time I think that there isn't anything else, something uh, shows up. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to keep my, my hang hopes open. Yeah, you've definitely been uh, very generous uh, with the fans and allowing them to have access to this stuff. And it's great that you're in charge of all that. Well, I'm just, uh, you know, honored, especially after finding out that I was his daughter and that he... Uh, before, I was, as I said, did something for me before I was born. I'm, I'm very proud because I think that if he was alive today, that he would say that's exactly what I would want to do with this material. Wonderful. Again, Jet, uh, this is an excellent set, and uh, it's a great story and how everything worked out, and I really appreciate you taking the time out with me today. Uh, my pleasure, and thank you for your interest. All right, you bet. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.